We're one week away from the fantasy postseason, which means you're probably scouring a shallow pool of free agents without much success. That's what I'm here for. Dave Lockren of awesome here to bring you your top five waiver ads for week 13. Let's cue that music. Oh, and before we do, stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to give you a couple of my favorite streaming options at quarterback and defense special teams heading into the upcoming week. It's a highly underutilized aspect of fantasy football that needs to be taken advantage of more often. If you stream the right players in deep leagues, you stream the right defenses, it can give you that additional little edge that you need every week to win your head-to-head matchups. Let's dive into it. First up on the list is Cam Akers. I'm sure you're asking yourself, why would I want to go near this backfield? Sean McVay's rotated them all season long, and quite frankly, Cam Akers has been at the back of the pecking order. Cam Akers has seen only one fewer rushing attempt than Daryl Henderson and 12 more than Malcolm Brown over that span. He's also seen eight opportunities in the red zone. Moreover, his last two games have been the second and third highest snap count he's seen on the entire season. The Rams' two longest runs have both been from Cam Akers this season. Meanwhile, Daryl Henderson and Malcolm Brown have combined for one run of over 20 yards all year long. Now, that might not mean anything to Sean McVay, but Cam Akers is the more explosive back, the highest upside back they have, and I'm willing to take some shots on him this week because if he goes off, you might not have another opportunity to get him as we head into the playoffs. Next up, Ito Smith. Sure, he only played 36% of snaps last week to Brian Hill's 50, and Brian Hill was the flavor of the week. You had to add him. Everybody says this is going to be the guy, but not necessarily, right? Just because he was the backup to Todd Gurley, just because he spelled him often more than Ito Smith, didn't mean that he was going to get a workhorse role, and it shouldn't have been interpreted that way. It's not surprising that this ended up being a near 50-50 split because Brian Hill is not a bell cow bat. So while everyone loaded up on Brian Hill last week, you've got the opportunity to grab Ito Smith heading into week 13. And here's why you want him on your teams. First off, while he saw less snaps than Brian Hill, he was targeted far more than Brian Hill in the passing game, five to one to be exact. He also saw seven opportunities in the red zone to Brian Hill's one. And while he only saw 12 carries to Brian Hill's 13, He was much more effective on those opportunities, averaging 5.4 yards per attempt to Hill's 4.2. All of this leads to Ito Smith getting the more quality opportunities, both in the passing game and on the ground, especially if he's going to be the one getting the ball inside the 20-yard line. If he's still out there, and he should be, Ito Smith wakes for a great waiver wire addition if Todd Gurley is once again unable to play in Week 13. It's a heavy week for running backs on the waiver wire, so we don't have a ton at other positions. But one at the tight end spot is going to be Dalton Schultz. It's been an ugly year at the quarterback position for Dallas since Dak Prescott went down with that brutal ankle injury earlier in the year. But Dalton Schultz has still proven that at a very weak position, he's capable of just giving us what we need from week to week. As a matter of fact, and while some of these stats are inflated by the early season struggles playing from behind in a high volume offense, Schultz is sixth in targets at his position fifth in receptions, 13th in yards, and fifth in routes run at an awful tight end position. So while he hasn't done as much as we would have liked him to do with those opportunities, he's at least seeing the chances, and that's what matters. If you're looking for someone else, don't have any depth here at tight end. Trey Burton, you could do a whole lot worse than him. As a streaming option for week 13, he's got a great matchup against a bottom-ranked Houston defense and is seeing opportunities in the red zone. That's what we care about. A couple of receptions and a receiving touchdown held for Burton, maybe even a rushing touchdown will give you what you need. Next up is Devontae Booker. Josh Jacobs injured his ankle in the second half of last week's brutal loss in Atlanta. If he ends up sitting out for week 13, Devontae Booker becomes the number one waiver wire ad hands down, but we don't know that's going to be the case. So I'm throwing him somewhere in the middle here. Jalen Richard could also suit up. He was down with a chest injury. And then as he was off the injury report, he came down with a non-COVID illness, which held him out for week 12 as well. If he does happen to return and Josh Jacobs sits, I would expect Devontae Booker, who saw four targets in Sunday's loss, to see a lack of involvement in the passing game where Richard does his best work. Nevertheless, they're facing a Jets team. They are big favorites on the road in New York, and they should look to lean on the ground. Even though the Jets' run defense has been better than their secondary, both have been exploitable. 
and expect the time of possession to be strong in favor of the Las Vegas Raiders. If that's the case, you've got Devontae Booker likely getting the large majority of carries on the ground and making for a great waiver wire ad if Josh Jacobs sits for one week. Last up on our list, and this should be an easy one, after the bombshell was dropped on us last night that Will Fuller was suspended for the remainder of the season for violating the league's performance-enhancing substance policy, is Kike QT. Very simple here. QT has been quiet all season long, an afterthought to be exact. But with Fuller suspended, Randall Cobb on the IR, and Kenny Stills released, he immediately becomes the Texans' number two receiver behind only Brandon Cooks. Expect QT to be on the field the large majority of time on these offensive snaps, of which he's played 50-plus percent in each of his last two weeks. I wouldn't be surprised to see him play 85 90% of snaps on offense going forward. He should see a huge spike in opportunities, and there's no reason not to grab him especially if you're a Will Fuller owner, or even if you're just looking to protect yourself from the myriad injuries we've seen this season, or the simple fact that players could be ruled out on the COVID-19 reserve list at any moment, right up before lock. Those are your top five waiver additions for week 13. And now for some top streaming options for those of you in deep competitive leagues, or maybe even super flex leagues where quarterbacks are tough to come by. First one up is Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's very simple. He's a volatile, high-volume gunslinger that gets a matchup against the Bengals this week. You can't ask for more than that. If Tua Tagovailoa ends up sitting out one more game with that thumb injury, Ryan Fitzpatrick gets installed into an offense that we know he can run. They're 11.5-point favorites. They have a near 27-point implied total against a banged-up Bengals team. You can't ask for more than this for a low-owned quarterback with a ton of upside. Finally, for those of you in the deepest of leagues, the super flex leagues where you can't find anything, Mitchell Trubisky might be your guy this week. The Detroit Lions have allowed 22 passing touchdowns. They've allowed the seventh most passing yards per game. And Mitchell Trubisky, quite frankly, has performed quite well against them in the past. It's ugly. It doesn't feel good. But if you need somebody, Mitchell Trubisky is almost certainly on the waiver wire begging to be scooped up. As far as defenses go, Look no further than the Las Vegas Raiders. Coming off a brutal, brutal upset loss to the Atlanta Falcons down south, but now it's time to bounce back. They're seven and a half point favorites against a disastrous New York Jets offense that has an implied total of under 20 points for week 13. The Raiders Raiders are only 9% owned in Yahoo leagues and make for a great streaming option for week 13. Lastly, we talked about Mitchell Trubisky. But don't sleep on the Lions either. If you need something desperate to, to, if you need something and are desperate at the defensive special teams position, the Detroit Lions are virtually unowned across the board. And while Mitchell Trubisky is poised to put up some potentially decent numbers, there's no question that this man is known for making bad reads, bad passes, and getting picked off. A pick six, a scoop and score, it's very much in the cards for this Lions team. I'd advise against it, but if you're dire straits, if you need something and you can't get to this Jets defense, the Detroit Lions might give you what you need. That'll do it for today. Thanks for hanging out, and remember to follow me at Lafay underscore D. It's L-O-U-G-H-Y underscore D on Twitter. And hit that subscribe and like button if you haven't done so yet. We'll see you back here next week for the top five waiver wire ads for week 14.